Hej og velkommen til uh, Studies webinar med University of Otago. Det er i dag den 4. november 2019, og jeg skal være opmærksom på, at det her webinar det bliver optaget og kan blive uh, publiceret. Normalt så rejser Studies rundt til landets største byer og holder fysiske uh, infomøder. Og i ny og næ, jamen der har vi besøg af vores universiteter, som fortæller om studiemulighederne ved deres uh, institutioner. I dag så er vi jo gået online og har fået besøg af Sarah Ewing fra øh, University of Otago, hvor hun er Regional Market Manager. Og øh, Sarah vil øh, indlænge i en øh, lille øh, præsentation af deres muligheder på øh, universitetet. Mit navn er øh, Miki Kroman Jensen. Jeg er international uddannelseskonsulent og stifter af StudySea. Dagens program eller agendaen ser sådan her ud. Jeg fortæller lige lidt kort om StudySea, hvordan vi hjælper. Herefter fortæller Sarah om Otago. Og derefter jamen, så fortæller jeg lidt omkring mulighederne for at finansiere sit studieophold i udlandet. Og til sidst jamen, så tager vi imod spørgsmål. StudySea er en privat virksomhed. Vi er repræsentant i Danmark for over 50 anerkendte udenlandske universiteter. Øhm, som officiel repræsentant for de udenlandske universiteter, øh, så kan vi gratis øh, hjælpe dig og vejlede dig, som går og overvejer at studere i udlandet på et af vores universiteter. Øh, det er gratis, fordi vi er finansieret af vores øh, samarbejdsuniversiteter. Den anden del, det vi gør, jamen, det er øh, praktikformidling. Så vi øh, formidler praktik via nogle forskellige praktikpakker, og øh, det er blandt andet til Australien, Irland, USA, Vietnam, men også andre steder i verden. Er man interesseret i at høre mere om det, jamen, så har vi specifikke webinarer omkring praktik i udlandet, som I også kan finde på vores YouTube-kanal. Hvordan hjælper Studies i, hvis vi lige igen hopper tilbage til studier i udlandet? Øhm, så er øh, ja, ideen egentlig, at vi vil gøre det så nemt og overskueligt for dig, som overhovedet muligt at komme til udlandet. Det kan være lidt en jungle, øhm, hvis man skal gøre det her alene på egen hånd, og man ikke har prøvet det før. Vi har heldigvis selv prøvet det før, og vi har hjulpet rigtig mange af steder, som også, øh, øh, hvad hedder det, ja, som ikke nødvendigvis, som også gjorde det første gang. Og man kan sige, øh, mange står måske her i, i første stadie, hvor man har en tanke om at tage til udlandet, man ved ikke helt, hvor man skal starte, jamen så tage fat i os, du kan møde med os, øh, ring til os, så skal vi nok forsøge at guide jer frem til øh, det valg, som er rigtigt for jer. Når det så er, at man er nået frem til øh, en beslutning om, at jeg vil gerne afsted, og jeg vil gerne søge ind på det her universitet, øh, jamen så hjælper vi selvfølgelig med, med, med ansøgningen. Øhm, det vil sige, at der er delt selvfølgelig ansøgningsprocessen til det udenlandske universitet, men der er jo også, øh, hvis det er en hel uddannelse udlandet, man skal, man skal læse, jamen så er der også en masse dokumentation, der skal bruges for at få uddannelsen godkendt til SU. Hvis det er et studieophold, man læser i udlandet, som skal være en del af sin danske uddannelse, jamen så er der nogle fag, der skal forhåndsgodkendes, før man overhovedet kan få, øh, få det godkendt og for at få SU og udlandsstipendium med. Så det er selvfølgelig noget, vi guider jer igennem. Øh, når man er blevet optaget, øh, og det er heldigvis sådan, at over 98% af dem, der søger igennem StudyC, øh, de bliver faktisk optaget. Øh, så når man er blevet optaget, jamen, så er man i, i pre -depart, pre departure stadiet, og det er jo her, hvor man skal have, have, have styr på alle de praktiske ting. Øh, fra StudyC, jamen, der får I en pre departure guide, så lad os nu sige, at I skal til New Zealand på University of Otago, jamen, så får I en New Zealand pre departure guide, som har fokus selvfølgelig på, specifikt på New Zealand og alle de trin, man nu skal igennem. Øh, det kan være vaccination og vis og forsikring osv., og som der skal styr på, før man, øh, før man rejser afsted. Man bliver også inviteret til vores øh, Facebook-gruppe. Vi har Facebook-grupper i de mest populære destinationer, hvor man så kan møde og forbinde med andre, der skal afsted samtidig, eller måske er på destinationen, eller, eller har været der øh, før. Øhm, legatsøgning er også noget, vi meget varmt øh, anbefaler, fordi man kan få øh, en hel del penge ind den vej til at, at hjælpe med at gøre det, øh, gøre det billigere, om så at sige, nogle gange at få det hele betalt. Det er lidt forskelligt. Men vi, vi sender jer et eksempel på den gode øh, legatansøgning, og så henviser vi til nogle af de steder, hvor det er, man kan gå ind og søge efter de her forskellige øh, legatfonde. Når I har fået styr på alt det praktiske, jamen, så er det egentlig bare at rejse afsted. Øh, alle vores universiteter har rigtig god support for internationale studerende, og det gælder også University of Otago. 
Så det er egentlig sjældent, vi hører fra folk, når de er dernede. Selvfølgelig følger vi med, så godt vi nu kan på sociale medier, når I hashtagger, så er det sige. Men ellers så for også at bevare kontakten og skabe et netværk for jer, når I kommer hjem og har gennemført ophold, så bliver en del af vores alumne netværk. En gang om året holder vi en sommerfest, og nogle bruger det selvfølgelig for det rent sociale, og andre bruger det også til professionel networking, om man så kan sige. Det var sådan bare lige meget hurtigt og kort omkring øh, StudyC, hvordan vi hjælper jer afsted, øh, når vi snakker om, om studier i udlandet. Nu vil jeg jo så egentlig bare gerne kaste mikrofonen over til hovedpersonen, øh, som skal fortælle øh, lidt om University of Otago. Nu skal jeg lige finde ud af lige at sætte Sarah på. Her, Sarah, kan I høre mig? I can, Mickey. Thank you very much for such a kind introduction. And I hope um, everybody can hear me okay. And I'm very looking forward to again sharing my presentation with the university for the University of Otago. Excellent, Sarah. Go ahead and try to share your um, presentation so we can see it here on the on the screen. I'm not able to do it while you're still sharing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I will. Uh... <laughs> If you unshare, hopefully I can share. Thanks. Let me try to just stop my sharing. All right. Did that, okay, uh... let's see how we are here. Okay, fabulous. Can you see? We see PowerPoint. The reason why study in New Zealand. Perfect. Got it. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Mickey, as I said, for the introduction. It's a real honor to work with StudyC and hopefully give you a little bit of information about why you would consider studying in New Zealand. And then I'll talk about um, the University of Otago. So you may have heard of New Zealand. We are this fabulous country about as far away as possible from Denmark that you can go. It is beautiful and we have a population of 4.9 million um, and very, very welcoming. We do have a world-class education. Um, New Zealand universities rank in the top 3% of the world. Um, we do have a fantastic lifestyle, very much work-life balance, and a very, you know, a very hands-on way of learning. Um, our students are encouraged to ask questions and to think critically, um, and our teaching style often offers hands-on learning as well. And also for a big part from our Danish students, um, you have excellent language skills, but All of our classes are in English. English is our um, main language. You may not know that New Zealand actually has three languages. We have English, we have Maori, which is our indigenous language, and we also have sign language. So that's the random um, uh, language question of today. I'd always be good in a pub quiz after that. So I am going to go into welcoming you to the New Zealand um, and the University of Otago. So in New Zealand, we see kia ora, that means hello. And I'm delighted to say that we are New Zealand's first university. And um, we were established in 1869, and this year is our 150th. Um, not old by European standards, but certainly um, the oldest and the first in New Zealand. And if I can, I'm hoping this video will play for you so you don't just have to hear my words for it. I love being at the University of Otago in Dunedin, specifically because of its proximity to a lot of cool outdoors outlets. Like yesterday I went on a hike that was just a 10 minute drive and you can even walk there. I feel like every day is um, an adventure. I've been like all the world about everything from the surrounding nature to how friendly people is to just like all the students living around uni, a beautiful university. My classes are quite varied. I've got small tutorial sessions and then big lectures with everybody. And so it's really cool that they care so much, even though I'm international and I don't actually go here, they don't care about that. They just care to help you. Learn. And I really feel that being at Otago, I'm at a World Class University at the same time as I'm also enjoying my time here and just like exploring everything else around it. I felt very welcome here as an international student. First of all, you have uni flats and they do a lot of things for you. You can choose your flatmates, actually you can say who you want to live with, what kind of person you are and then they will 
that into up to your TV host where my spot is situated. I can make it to my lectures in under 10 minutes. And then I can also make it to the beach. You can go by bus, which is only like $2. Or you can, if you have a car, you can take your car there and it's just 10 minutes away. Otago is really an awesome place. And being here for six months, I've barely been able to scratch the surface. For anyone that enjoys the outdoors, be that beaches or fishing or climbing, even skiing, it's really a paradise. Okay, so that was a little snapshot of what some of our study abroad students um, feel about their time here at Otago. This presentation is more focused towards study abroad, so or free mover, where you would do one semester um, abroad. We always also have international students on campus who will do undergraduate degree and master's and also PhD. So Mickey and the team at StudyC will be able to guide you through that um, and tell you all the different courses on offer there. So first of all, I'm gonna start with where we are and how do you get to Dunedin? So as you can see, um, we are at pretty much the bottom of the world. It is a beautiful city. We are blessed with 26 beaches around us and fantastic clear blue skies that you can see there. So being at the bottom of the world has its advantages. Um, our population in the whole of the South Island is only 1 million people. And in Dunedin itself, it's 130,000. So how would you get to us? Um, you'd either fly into Auckland or you'd fly into Christchurch and then you'd fly down to Dunedin or some students choose to take the bus from Christchurch to Dunedin. It's about six and a half hours um, all up. We have a smaller population, so our road network is not as fabulous as Denmark, where our roads can be quite windy. So that's where when you look at the size of the map versus to the travel times, they can vary considerably. You can also see our proximity to Wanaka and Queenstown, which are our adventure playgrounds of the South Island. And I'll talk about that a little more. So Dunedin, we do love to think of our being one of the world's great small cities. Um, we are known predominantly as being a study destination. So the students that come to us at Otago, 85% of them have traveled from all over New Zealand to choose to study in our city. So as well as you being from overseas and away from home, the majority of our New Zealand students are also away from home too. So that vibrancy stays on campus seven days a week because the students don't disappear home at the weekend, which really gives it that fantastic student culture. But I wanna talk a little bit about future Dunedin as well, and then I'm gonna come back to the university. So as I said, our town is 130,000. We have 30,000 students. So imagine the vibrancy that brings. But what Dunedin is also doing at this stage is we have been lucky enough to have the fastest internet um, in the last five years, which has provided an amazing startup culture. And the academics and business networks connect together. So you can access this even as a study abroad student and get a real feel for how New Zealand businesses work as well as your study time with audacious programs. And again, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me or Mickey at Study C, and I can explain more about those. But I'm also delighted to announce that New um, Dunedin last week has just been nominated as the New Zealand Centre of Digital Excellence. What this is going to grow an amazing video game development industry along with our self health science. So it's a very exciting time to be part of the city as well. So this is our main city beach. You saw that in our video. It's a 15 minute drive from campus. So if you want to shake the cobwebs out of studying, it's the perfect place to do it. And um, there was a couple of sea lions on the beach there yesterday when I was down. So it's a gorgeous start. And this just gives you a little snapshot of what life is like in Dunedin. We've got culture. We are a UNESCO city of heritage. We've got an amazing coffee culture, which I know um, Danes particularly enjoy. We've got street art, we've got wildlife, we've got a fashion idea week, and we've also got a great sporting culture. We may not have won the Rugby World Cup, but we certainly enjoy our rugby. We also have Midwinter Carnival is our big highlight of the year event. So time is, is not a loss. We do have New Zealand's only castle. Now, 
In comparison to a European castle, it's not much, but the reason why I love showing this photograph is the two bumps in the middle of the Otago Harbour, that is where our marine science um, a resource facility is located and also at the tip end of the Tagal Peninsula we are fortunate to have some of the most amazing wildlife. It's not many universities in the world can say they have penguins within a 40 minute drive of campus. And we have the South Island's only albatross um, landing colony as well. So if you enjoy the outdoors and you love wildlife, it's a really great place to come and visit. The reason why we're called the University of Otago, we're actually in the province of Otago. And what that also to is an adventure paradise. We have beautiful lakes, we've got mountains, we've got the dark sky um, um, status in Iraqi Mount Cook. These are all within a two to four hour drive. Um, very popular with our um, Danish students at weekends. Um, a few of them may not have a class on a Friday afternoon or a Monday morning and can take advantage of this. So it's a beautiful region to discover. Um, in winter time, so our seasons are the opposite to yours. We have um, ski fields and um, we've got uh, uh, mountain biking all year round. This is again a snapshot of what you've got accessible to you as well. We've got some of the great walks in very close proximity and as I already mentioned, Queenstown, which is the adventure paradise. You, if you are adrenaline junkie, it is perfect. It's bungee jumping, whitewater rafting, you name it, it's going on there. So that gives you a bit of a flavor of Dunedin, the city itself and also the region that we're in. But now I'm gonna knuckle down, talk about the important stuff and why you would study at Otago. We are incredibly fortunate and have a really unique campus life in Australasia. The majority of our students, now we have 20,000 students on campus, most of them, as I said, live away from home, and the majority of our undergrads will live within a 10 to 15 minute walk of campus. So you can imagine how vibrant it is. In regards to being a national and international campus, out of our 20,000, we have about 2,900 international students. We have quite an unusual mix in this part of the world. The majority of our international students actually come from America, come for one semester study abroad. Then we have China, Malaysia, India, and then a breakdown of over 100 different nationalities. And we have a very large European contingent with all the European countries um, combined. So it really does feel like an international campus. We also have an incredibly diverse range of academics. Over 70% of our academics either achieved their highest qualification or are from overseas, so you will truly get a global perspective. I am delighted to say our university is QS ranked 176, so we sit in that top 1% of universities in the world, so you know you're going to get a very, very good academic education and an outstanding student experience. We've been voted the last six years as best student experience in New Zealand, so we must be doing something right, it's pretty good. So as well as having the um, 2,900 international students I talked about, we are also a leading postgraduate research institution. And that's why we attract so many students from so many countries. Out of our um, student mix, we have 4,500 postgrads and 1,380 PhDs. So the academics, the students you will be interacting with have such a massive range of knowledge. You will, know, you will learn something when you hear, that's for sure. In regards to rankings, I'm not going to go through all of these, um, but we do incredibly well in sports. We're 20th in the world, dentistry, we're 34th, and we sit within the top 50 to 100, 100 universities in the world for a huge variety of subjects, as well in the top 200 for the rest. But what I love to show is how big our global reach is. As you can see where that little dot down the bottom with the black, but this shows you the global research and publications our academics and PhD candidates are undertaking at present. So you can be guaranteed of a really global look at um, your study experience. 
So as I said, we've been very fortunate, outstanding student experience. We are very much a residential campus where you are encouraged to live, study and play. Um, and we have a massive suite of cultural recreation activities um, offered on campus. Um, the beauty of being so close and everybody's pretty much in walking distance is it gives you a lot more time to A, study, B, do activities you enjoy, and C, make the most of being in New Zealand. So again, a little snapshot of what life looks like on our campus. We have international um, food festivals. The top right hand corner is our orientation week. Um, one of our most popular forms of transport is the skateboard due to the flat nature of our campus and where the majority of our students live. Um, sport and field work make up a big part of it as well, as well as having a very vibrant music and um, party scene, you could say. So if you were to ask me who an Otago student is, it is somebody who's adventurous. We are far away. So if you're coming from Denmark, you're looking at about a 27 hour journey. So there's a degree of adventure involved in that. It's somebody who's independent, you'll be living away from home. I know Danish students do it incredibly well down here. You are academically capable because we do teach to a very high standard. Emotionally mature, don't know about my 18 year olds from New Zealand, but certainly they come out emotionally mature, but also service and community orientated. We have a very big focus on volunteering at the university. It's a big part of our culture and incredibly rewarding for our international students who get involved in this as well. And you can fit that around your studies. So when I'm talking about study abroad, um, as I said, this is our largest cohort of students on campus. Our semester is the opposite to you guys. So our summer semester starts in February and finishes in June. We have around 380 students, then July through to November, slightly fewer students. And that gives you the breakdown on where our um, students sit. So Denmark's right up there, which is great. We have an amazing um, facility called University Flats, which I'm going to touch on a bit more, but it gives you the opportunity to live with a New Zealander. We call them Kiwi hosts and where you can meet um, our locals as well. So the interesting thing is, what can you study? So in New Zealand, we call a course a paper. I still don't know why, but that's what we do. And it's normally three or four papers you would sit in one semester. And one paper is approximately a 12 hour workload, just to give you an idea of where things sit. We have four key divisions of the university. So we have our businesses, we have our sciences, we have our humanities, and we have our health science division as well. A huge variety of options available. Mickey and the team at Study C will be able to talk you through those and help guide you in the right direction of what will suit you to give you the best experience. As I said, this is predominantly a study abroad presentation, but I will just touch on, um, especially if you're coming for a, um, a postgraduate program, we have postgraduate diplomas, we have coursework masters, which are one year, and we also have a masters that is a two year program as well, as well as our PhD study. The great thing with PhD study in New Zealand as well is you will only pay the same fees that New Zealanders pay. So we do get, tend to attract a lot of European students over for PhD study too. Big part of our um, teaching over here is field work and experiential learning. So within a paper, you may only have two to three contact hours. Some of that will be a lecture, some will be a tutorial. If you're in science, you may be in a lab. If you're studying geography, you may be outdoors. If you're doing marine science, you could be on one of the research vessels. If you're doing sports, you could be um, with the flume or with um, within one of our um, sports facilities. So it really is a hands-on learning experience. We also have some New Zealand flavors. So if you do not have to take all your papers and you can choose to do electives, there are some fantastic um, options available for you to learn a bit more about New Zealand and get a very different feel for life in this part of the world. 
And that's just an example of some of the um, facilities that we've got on campus that you can access, depending on the papers that you're doing. A big draw card for our study abroad students, as I said, is the accommodation and university flats. Because of the nature of Dunedin and our students are all away from home, the majority of our undergraduate students from New Zealand will rent a flat or an apartment from January through to the end of December. So what happens for our one semester students is we recognize that they, it was difficult for them to get private accommodation for one semester. So the university has all these university flats, which are actually really houses. They're not flats slash apartments as you would know them in, in Denmark. Um, and this is where you would share with four or six other flatmates and one which is a New Zealander. Now the Kiwi host is always a student who's either got an interest in international students, has done an exchange, or would like to do an overseas experience but can't afford it, so gets their international flavor there. And they can be absolutely brilliant. What you do with our university flats is you're in, you fill out an application form and you're encouraged to be as honest as possible. If you like to party, say you like to party. If you'd prefer to quieter flat and you like gaming, say you'd like gaming. If you're vegan and you don't want to be with meat eaters, put that down as well. Our team behind the scenes do an amazing job of matching flatmates up. You're only there for one semester. We want you to enjoy it to the most that you can. So it's vital that we try and fit you with the right people. Also, if, you're tra if you choose to study along with a friend, you will not be placed in the same flat. We, um, we separate friends out to ensure that everybody in the flat has the same, um, you know, they're new in the flat too. But what that means is that your friend is maybe a flat two minutes walk from you. You've got six new friends. They've got six new friends. All of a sudden, there's 12 of you. It works really well. In the house itself, it's um, fully ready to move into. So you've got everything you need in your kitchen, your bathroom. You'll share the kitchen, you'll share your bathroom. You will have your own bedroom. It's lockable. Um, and there's normally a bit of a garden area as well. There's also a great community within university flats. They'll organize sporting events, um, going out to Marae to learn more about the local Maori culture. They'll have meals. So you really do get another community within the university itself. So this is a snapshot of some of our housing. It doesn't all look like that. They vary considerably. I do get asked a lot about students of what is the inside of a uni flat looks like. We have 160 houses, and as I say, they all vary. So rather than give a false impression of what you get, some will look like this and be old, other ones will be newer, but that's the team um, at the start of a semester in summer, handing out some goodie bags to the occupants, so it really is um, starts it off. So what's your life like on campus? This is an overview of our campus. So you would have seen the beautiful clock tower building that's in, the, um, in all of our prospectuses. That is the bill, you'll see the river running through. That's the river of Leith. The clock tower is the building on the left. The big ugly brown building that's diagonally across from that, that sits up high, that's our hospital. So you can see how close the university campus is to the hospital and then the city centre is a further five minute walk from there. So that's when I said about the skateboard being the most popular form of transportation, it shows you how close everything is. The flat areas around the university are where the majority of our undergraduate students will live. And we also have the university colleges that hug around there as well. These are our residential colleges that our first year undergraduates would move into. They come for year one, year two, they move out into private accommodation. So again, it keeps that vibrancy all around the campus seven days a week. Okay, on campus, we have seven libraries. Our largest one is the top um, left-hand corner. It's over four floors, sits over 2,000. Nice and toasty warm in um, winter. Um, 
We are a Wi-Fi town. Um, Dunedin does have the, the fastest internet and you've got access to all free fibre. Um, student learning and development, if you need any extra assistance when you're there, that's all available to you. We have Unipol, I'm going to touch on that next, a volunteer centre, and we also have Campus Watch. Now, I'm just going to touch on this. Campus Watch is um, a group um, of people that are hired by the university that just want to make sure our students are all safe. We've got 20,000 of you, most of you away from home. They walk around, they're a lot of the time used for fixing light bulbs in uniflats or people who've lost their keys. Um, some of our international students who come from larger cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, Mumbai do find it a little quiet at night because again if you've moved from a city of 20 million to a city of 130,000 you can call them up and they'll walk you, you home from the library. It's not that it's un, not safe because it's Doreen's probably one of the safest cities I've ever lived in. It's just a little quiet in the evening time for, for some of our um, international students. Like Denmark, in winter, um, in, in Dunedin, we do have shorter days, and then we have these beautiful long days in summertime. So that's where that comes in. Um, and we have got an amazing rec centre. We need to keep you all busy um, as well as studying. So there's three floors um, there that you can access. Again, that's all part of your student services fee. We've got a great rec centre. And this just gives you a bit of a snapshot of what Unipol has to offer. And we have over 150 clubs and societies that you can be part of. It's normally our students tend to find <laughs> There's so much choice to what to get involved in. Um, so if you enjoy the outdoors and tramping, um, which is the New Zealand term for hiking, you can hire tents from Unipol. There's surfboards you can hire. There's paddle boards you can hire. Um, the clubs and societies, there's music performances you can get involved in. We've got great food festivals. There really is something to cater for everybody here and make them welcome on campus. Biggest thing is just get involved in it. All the other student services are on site that you can access. Um, it might be a bit funny me putting disability and information support up there. Um, unfortunately, every year we do tend to have somebody who may have a snowboarding slash mountain biking accident that needs help writing exams. Um, but that is all available for international students as well. So everything is there for you um, on the doorstep. I did talk about volunteering. Again, something great to get involved in. Looks great on your resume. Um, you can even volunteer in a wildlife hospital here. Yes, you can help the penguins. Um, so there's lots of different things you can get involved in and really get a different feel for New Zealand. Ask Otago is our central um, hub. That's your first point of contact if you need help. It's situated in our library. They will point you in the right direction. But we also have a dedicated international student support um, team. There is actually six of them. I only had four of their photos, so I've got to update this. Um, the international student journey is a great one, but sometimes it does have its ups and downs, and that's what the team are there for. They've all lived overseas. They all get it. They know how to help you. In New Zealand, all you've got to do is ask, and somebody will be there for you. So if we're looking at, and again, this is just study abroad, to give you an idea of single semester fees, I have put it into Krona, but this is on a, that was on yesterday's exchange rate, so it can vary. But you're looking at three or four papers, it's around 56, 700 um, Krona. And in Uniflats, a single semester, um, so that's for the whole length of your semester, that works out about 22,194. You can get cheaper accommodation options in Dunedin. Uniflat is very much designed as a wraparound service with everything provided for you. The one thing I really want to stress about New Zealand, because it is very different to Europe, I'm originally from Scotland, New Zealand houses do not have good central heating or double glazing, which can come as a bit of a shock to our European students when I know how gorgeously warm your houses and offices are. Uniflat includes power, so you can guarantee to stay warm. 
If you're looking for private accommodation, we would always recommend that you see a house and you get what you pay for. So again, that's something you can have a chat to the study C team about and they can have a chat to me about it and I can guide you through it, but it is something um, to be mindful of. So there is also insurance um, fee on that as well and then personal budget depends on, on what you want to spend. On the whole, the cost of living in New Zealand for eating out and certainly, um, uh, um, you know, pizza, takeaway food, cheap eats is, is considerably cheaper than Denmark. Um, so your, your kroner can go a long way here, which is the good news. So application dates, if you're looking to start in semester one or summer start, that has to be in by 1st December. If you're looking for a July start, it's by the 30th of April. You can start four to six months out of the semester start date. This gives you your academic entry requirements. If you're looking at study abroad, any 100 year papers, you will automatically approve with entry requirements. If you're looking at level 200, which is year two and above, it will depend on your previous academic experience. Our academics assess every transcript to make sure that you're going to be capable of doing the course because the last thing we'd want for you or for the academics is that you don't have the right background because that's not fun for anybody. Um, and then you'd get your special permission request. If you're looking at coming in um, at a master's level, those programs depend on obviously your undergraduate degree and um, we're looking for what we call an equivalent to an Atago B and that would be assessed by an academic as well. And the great thing with English language, um, as long as you've got your A level or minimum GP, GP of nine in your B level from your upper secondary school, then there's no extra English language required. Any other information, contact the STEAM at Study C, you'll be in great hands. Or you can have a look on our. You can also have a look on our website. I will be the first to put our hands up. Our website can be tricky to navigate sometimes. So if you do need help to find anything out, Mickey and the team can help you out, um, and they can also get in touch with me. And that is it. I'm going to finish with a little bit of Dunedin at night. Okay, well, thank you so much for the opportunity to share a little bit of uh, University of Otago and life down in New Zealand. And I will pass you back to Mickey at Study C. Thanks so much, uh, Sarah, for a great presentation. So, I mean, you, you, you've got it all. Beautiful <laughs> nature, lots of outdoor activities, penguins, <laughs> surfing, you know, yeah. beaches. Um, no, that was really, really amazing and also a, a, a beautiful uh, video to, to, to wrap it up uh, with. Um, thank you very much for that, Sarah. No um, problem at all. It's my pleasure. I hopefully will see you down in New Zealand one day. I look forward to that. <laughs> um, I'm just going to mute you again, Sarah. I'm going to jump over to, to wrap up this with some uh, info on funding, um, which I'll do in, in, in Danish. Uh, in just Perfect. A moment. Yes. God, yeah, man, um, når man skal studere i udlandet, Øh, så er det jo ikke ualmindeligt, at det koster nogle penge. Det koster noget, øh, noget, noget tuition fee eller skolepenge, om man så kan sige. Øh, der er heldigvis gode muligheder for at, at finansiere øh, sådan et ophold eller en uddannelse. I Danmark der har vi det, der hedder udlandsstipendieordningen. 
det er sådan set øh, blev introduceret i 2008 og gav mulighed for, at man kan tage sit taxametertilskud med til udlandet. Øh, det vil sige, de penge, som øh, den danske uddannelsesinstitution modtager øh, fra staten, dem vil man, øh, hvis man tager på øh, et meritgivende øh, studieophold eller læser en hel, kandidat, hel uddannelse på kandidatniveau i udlandet, så vil man have mulighed for at få de penge med sig til udlandet for at finansiere helt eller delvis den studieafgift, der er på det udenlandske universitet. Det er sådan, at udlandsstipendiet, det kan man maks få med i, i to år. Så hvis man for eksempel tager et semester øh, på sin bachelor og, og får udlandsstipendiet med, og så senere vil læse en hel masteruddannelse, jamen så skal man selvfølgelig lige være opmærksom på, at så har man kun halvanden øh, års øh, stipendie tilbage. Ikke fordi det nødvendigvis er et problem, fordi der findes altså mange steder i udlandet, hvor man kan læse masteruddannelser på blandt andet et år, halvandet år og selvfølgelig også to år nogle gange længere. Det varierer. Øhm, det man får med, altså hvor mange penge får man med, det afhænger af det, 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 det man læser. Øhm, hvis øh, vi kigger på studieophold, altså med rigtigivende studieophold, det vil sige, at du skal af din hjemmeinstitution have, have forhåndsgodkendt de fag, du tager i udlandet, så kan du få udlandsstipendium med, og her der er satserne for udlandsstipendium i, i 2019. Øhm, går man på universitetet, jamen så, så, så ligger den lave sats på 21.550 kroner. Den høje sats ligger på 44.800 kroner. Det er typisk dem, der får de lave satser, jamen det er typisk øh, humaniorer og samfundsvidenskabelige uddannelser, øh, hvor den høje sats, jamen det kan være IT og ingeniøruddannelse og medicin og, og, og de lidt mere... Øh, laboratorietunge uddannelser, om man så kan sige. Der er så nogle uddannelser, der ligger ind imellem, for eksempel kommunikation ligger sådan, ja, lige imellem de her. Øhm, Professionsbadsuddannelsen ligger mellem 27.000 og 66.000, cirka, og erhvervsakademiuddannelse, det er 27.000 op til 52.000 kroner. Det her, det er baseret på 30 ECTS. Øh, Maskinmesteruddannelsen, som vi ikke med på her, øh, den ligger på øh, et par 50, øh, lidt over 50.000 kroner for et semester med 30 ECTS. Øh, hvis man øh, læser på et universitet, nu, nu, nu så vi, at øh, Sara, Sara havde været flink at sætte øh, studieafgiften på i danske kroner, det var, så vi jeg husker, omkring 56.000 kroner, øh, der kan man sige, at i de fleste tilfælde vil man måske ikke få øh, nok med i udlandsstipendium til at dække hele studieafgiften. Men så er der så mulighed for at låne nogle penge fra staten også, og det er så det, der hedder udlandsstudielån, som står her nederst på, på det her slide. Det er i 2019 op til, til ca. 107.000 kroner, man kan låne den vej. Øh, man kan aldrig låne mere, end hvad forskellen er på udlandsstipendiet og den faktiske studieafgift. Udover, øh, man kan sige, udlandsstipendium, det er noget, man får, det skal ikke betales tilbage. Udlandsstudielån, det er lån, det skal betales tilbage, ligesom et SU-lån skal. Øh, SU kan man så også selvfølgelig tage masser til udlandet, øh, og derudover så også det her supplerende SU-lån. Øh som jo er ment til at skulle dække leveomkostningerne. Hvis vi kigger på, på en hel kandidatuddannelse i udlandet, jamen læser man en hel uddannelse, der vurderes til to år eller 120 ECTS, jamen så svinger satserne fra mellem ca. 86.000 op til, til omkring 179.000 øh, kroner. Så der er altså øh, ret gode muligheder for at, at få realiseret øh, sådan et ophold her når vi snakker økonomi. Det her, det var, det var de penge, der var at hente, om man så kan sige, fra, fra det offentlige. Øhm, det er også sådan, at der findes rigtig mange, der findes omkring 800 fondvalgater i Danmark, du også kan søge støtte fra. Du kan nok ikke søge fra alle sammen. Øhm, du er nødt til at, og, 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 hvad kan man sige, finde frem til de fonde, som du er kvalificeret til at søge. Det kan ofte være baseret på, på ret personlige, øhm, ret personlige, øh, Øh, detaljer og, og, og ja, det kan være alt fra hvor man er øh, født eller døbt til hvad ens forældre øh, har arbejdet med, det er meget forskelligt øh, scholarships, når jeg siger scholarships jamen, så er det hvis det udenlandske stip- øh, universitet giver et form for stipendie det er ikke så, så normalt når man snakker study abroad, altså semesterophold, men på hele uddannelse er det ofte noget øh, vi ser vores studerende får altså en form for reduktion i, i studieafgiften Arbejde under øh, sit øh, studie, og nogle gange også efter, er også en mulighed. Banklånskrådstræk, kassekredit, øh, personlig opsparingskrådstræk, forældre er jo også øh, for mange en mulighed. 
det var bare så meget kort lige omkring finansieringsmulighederne. Øhm, bare sådan lige til at, at runde af med, så kan man sige, øh, hvorfor søge ud til for eksempel University of Otago eller et af vores andre un- samarbejdsuniversiteter igennem Study C. Øh, jamen det giver god mening. Man kan sige, som sagt, så er det gratis. Der er sådan set kun fordel ved øh, at benytte dig af vores øh, hjælp. Øh, du tilknyttes en personlig vejleder, så du får du har en ting, du kan ringe eller skrive til øh, under hele forløbet. Som regel bliver man optaget, i hvert fald af statistikken i dit forvør, der er altså over 98%, der bliver optaget, når de søger igennem Study C. Øh, du kan søge med kort varsel. Øh, det har mening i forhold til for eksempel, hvis du læser øh, et semester i udlandet, som deler din uddannelse. Der kan man sige, at uddannelsesinstitutionerne har ofte frister på udveksling, der ligger et år i forvejen. Sådan er det ikke med med, øh, med study abroad ophold eller så langt sidder studieophold gennem study C der er det udenlandske universitetsfrist som, som gælder øh, vi verificerer øh, eksamenspapirerne, øh, det koster ikke noget øh, du kan rejse med en ven du kan rejse med en kæreste, der er typisk ikke nogen begrænsning på antallet af studiepladser vi giver dig lidt tips til legatsøgning, eksempel på en god ansøgning du får, øh, bliver, ja, du får adgang til en facebook gruppe du bliver en del af vores alumne netværk, når du kommer hjem. Og så har du altså også igennem Study sin mulighed for at studere på et af verdens bedste universiteter og eller en af de mest populære destinationer i verden. Vi har over 50 universiteter, vi samarbejder med, som du kan vælge imellem. Og ja, i forhold til økonomien, jamen vi giver dig et overblik over finansieringsmulighederne. Du kan også for os få en budget skabelon, som du også blandt andet kan bruge selvfølgelig til at få dit overblik, men også til at søge legater.